That pesky photographer keeps trying to catch Kiss off guard. Ace and Peter are intercepted. Hey, Kiss, look this way. Nuts! Then he tracks down Paul at a restaurant. Come on, shucks! Hey, Gene, over here! Darn! But Kiss has the last laugh. Kiss Unmapped, the all-new album on Casablanca Records and Tricks. Kiss Unmapped. Available at Budget Tapes and Records. Hello, VC. Welcome Let back. Oh, welcome sorry. back to part two of our thrilling Kiss Unmasked discussion. I am your host, Sean, and along with me is the Vinyl Professor. I'm not sure why I'm the host. I just, just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I so I, I don't know why I said that, but that's okay. So just a really quick recap. We've discussed our own personal memories of this of this album, Kiss Unmasked, which came out in was it 1980? Yeah. Yes. Which was May the band, May? Yeah. which was the band's attempt to become commercial pop enterprise. Didn't really work. It sort of pissed people off. Really. We're going to go through the tracks now and, and be quite honest about what we think of it. Right. Well, I mean, can I just make one really quick observation? And it is about the music. Yes. This album uh, could have sounded better. There is a very very nasty synthetic reverb. Uh, which, if you listen on headphones, it's really noticeable, particularly on the drums. There's quite a few moments where the guy's hitting the drum, and you can hear they've they've just literally turned a, a knob on the desk and, and found a really nasty, maybe digital. I mean, was it? Would you would you call this an album that was ruined by '80s production? I think it's certainly yes, absolutely yeah. I think I would. It's the it's the, it's the beginning of it. Yeah, but it's, it's it's ruined in a way that's quite sort of distinctive. It's not ruined, you know, it's, it's got its own specific brand of ruination. Uh, and, and part of that is the synthesizers, right? I mean, there wasn't oh, a lot yeah, of synths yeah, on Kiss. Yeah. There isn't yeah. a lot of synthesizer work on other Kiss records. It's kind of prominent on this record. Okay, let's just launch in, because I think this video is going to get too long otherwise. Is that okay? Works for me. <laughs> right, so, so I've got... Side okay. one, track one. The opening track. Is that you? Is that you? Is That You, which is written by Gerard McMahon, apparently. I know nothing about him. Yeah, it, I don't either, but it's it's strange to have a, a, a non-Kiss written track on the album. And the thing is, it's really strange. If you imagine a band like, say, Queen, how totally unthinkable it would have been in, say, 1980. On know. the game, yeah. the opening track. <laughs> the opening yeah, track the Queen was... was just written by some random guy that you've never heard of before or since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so yes now so i put seven out of ten i've put i would i okay i go on i'd go i would actually go nine out of ten i really oh, like this song okay, okay okay it's not the best down here but it's really good yeah i put it chugs pleasingly and yeah it's a it's a great power pop rocker you know they're is, trying yeah. to be a cheap trick or you know raspberries whatever kind of power yeah, pop yeah. band you like it's that style of pop yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Right. Okay, so now we move on to Shandy, Jeff's favorite. Yes. Jeff Party yes. loves this song. Um, As do I. I've put sappy and sweet. Paul, not one hundred percent convincing. A shameless oh. lunge. A shameless lunge for pop crossover success. And I've put it's fun seeing Gene trying to look menacing during the video for this one. <laughs> Because he does, he still tries to look like the demon, doesn't he? he yeah. He, he's doing all these sort of menacing looks to camera, but then the camera sort of pans across and, and pulls there with his hair singing Shandy. And uh, also, Peter's <laughs> Peter's last appearance with a band. Oh right, back, yes. For, for his first go round. Yeah. It's an odd choice for a first single, though. I would. Hmm. I love the song. I give it ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah. I think song. I would too. Yeah. It's a. But it, to, to kick off your your your, your album with or your first single as a as a ballad was a strange choice to me. Mm. It feels really sort of calculated. Like okay, our our two big singles have been ballads. It was Beth and Hard Luck Woman. So I think they were trying to repeat the formula. Of, hey, let's try another ballad for a single. Mm. So it feels calculated in that regard. But I 
I love. It's a slick, slick pop song with nice shimmering guitars. Mm. Here I like the synthesizers. They're in yeah, the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, there's there for a little bit of texture before the chorus. I think, I think it's great. Anton Figg's drumming sounds very much like Peter's. It does, yeah. Which is not true elsewhere on the album. I mean, there are certain tracks no. where he makes no attempt to sound like uh, Peter at all. Well, the opening song, for example, he doesn't sound like Peter very much. No, no. Yeah, I mean, the reason I said no. Paul not 100% convincing is that I just think it's one of those songs that could have been sung much better by somebody else. Somebody who came from that style of music and, and could... I can't think of an example... But back in the 70s, if you'd got some really amazing, you know, Philly soul singer or somebody who could really inject it with something truly, you know, yeah. Paul Stanley cool. is not he's not 100% convincing, I don't think. But yeah, I agree. It's a great song. Yeah, it's one of my favourites on the album. OK, so talk to me. Music by Bob Kulick, apparently, on this one. Or uh, co-write, anyways, yeah. Mm. So what do you think of this one? Uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. Ace, oh, right, okay. Ace is really... Sh I love, I'm love. i a huge Ace fan, especially as a kid. And Ace is all over this record. Mm. Which, yeah, it's, he's got, what, three songs? That's the most Ace songs on a mm. Kiss record. It's almost as if Ace is the only one who realises that he's actually... That, that they are working on a Kiss album. It sounds like the other two yeah. think, think it's some kind of weird side project or something that they're doing... You know, like XTC, you know, some kind of weird side project. Like, you know, let's let's do a weird sort of cheap trick concept. But Ace, yeah. meanwhile, he's just plugged in and he's kind of like, hey, man, it, it kiss, you know, it's songs. just right. business, business as usual. So, uh, yeah, I've just put a simplistic, good, fun track. Um, catchy. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, it's catchy. It's catchy without being overtly poppy like the rest of the album. Yeah, I think, the I think the chorus is a great hook. I think his guitar solo is fantastic on this. Yeah, definitely is. Yeah, yeah. And I like yeah. I like the harmonies with him and Paul Stanley. I think those are nice too. Yeah, no, no, it's it's, it's a, a, yeah. I mean, I I I actually love all of Ace's songs on this album. So um, I I do too. Okay, so the, but then we have the first um, the first Gene track, uh, Naked, Naked City, City, which is based on an old TV show of that name, apparently. I've, I've just put this as an okay Gene song, but it's sort of, it probably needs Bob Ezrin behind the controls rather than uh, Vincent Poncia. Um, it's a little bit effete. I mean, Gene, I think possibly for the first time in his career, he actually does a falsetto vocal yes, in this song. I have, I have it written down. <laughs> oh, have you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually, for. I think it's actually very sophisticated for a Gene it Simmons is. track. It is, yeah. I, I, I think it starts off with a great riff. Yeah, as do most of the songs on the record. He pushes himself in terms of his vocal performance. I think his vocals are great for Gene Simmons. You know, mm. the arrangement on the track is great. You know, mm. thematically, it's it's unusual for Gene not to write a song about sleeping with women. Yeah, you know, this, true. The lyrics are actually very empathetic. You know, toward lonely people. There's actually mm -hmm. substance to this yeah. song. I mean, Gene. It's often forgotten. Me. I mean, Gene was a huge Beatles fan. And, oh yeah. Uh, he was he was quite capable of you know when he wanted to of writing something songwriter. yeah but he, but 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 then, but then again afterwards he would often then I just feel, sort of I, diss that side of his output. I feel I feel that's the biggest problem with this record and and, and I think even the elder mm. and even later with a record like Carnival of Souls the problem is that whenever Kiss tries to do something different and push themselves differently, they get penalized. You know, it, mm. the records don't sell as well. Mm. They get slammed by the fans. They get slammed by the press. And but, you know, but but then they actually then penalize themselves, don't they, and say, "Oh, we should never have done that." And you almost right, well, screw that, right? Yeah, and they look down yeah. on the stuff after the fact. Yeah. And you almost. I mean, want I think them. it's a really good song. Yeah. No, I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. So I give, no, go on. N another another nine out of ten. For me. Naked City, I'd probably give that an eight. Okay. What makes the world go round? I've put a cool power pop song. The guitars are quite kiss like. It reminds me a little bit of Strutter. There's a slightly strutterish feel to it. There is a very good guitar solo, but to me it doesn't sound like Ace, the guitar solo in this song. It sound it's probably Bo um Bob Kulick. Um I got I could or be mistaken. Paul, Paul, or Paul, Paul plays maybe. some of the solos on this record, yeah. Um, yeah, I just have it's a have it's a solid power pop song. 
That's all I've written down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's this sort of keyboard that's prowling around all the time. Yeah. And once the keyboard goes, uh, th- th- then the song becomes okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I- I'd probably give it a six. See, I did too, a six. Oh, there you go, okay. Okay, so now we have Tomorrow. So yeah, flip the record over to their side. Yeah, I've put a strong commercial song with a bombastic feel. You can sort of imagine it being done during the Crazy Nights era. Uh, but with a very different sound it would have had on on that record. Um, There are some very nasty, trilling keyboards in this one, that just really horrible little trilly keyboard flourishes. But it's a good song. I I like the synthesizers on this one. This one I put as a power pop masterpiece. I think Mm. this should have been the lead-off single from the record. I think. It's a well-crafted pop song. It's catchy as all hell. I love the layering of the background vocals in the chorus. Mm. How they're singing like a counter melody to what the actual chorus is singing. I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant, catchy song. It should have been a single. I give this one 10 out of 10. I love the hand claps. This is a great section towards the end where you hear all these hand claps going off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's a, it's a great track. Yeah, I mean, it kind of hooks back to the earliest days of Kiss in some ways cause, because they could always write these really amazing commercial choruses, you know, right back to yeah. you know, rock and roll all night. You know, I think Paul Stanley al- knew how to do that. It almost feels like a slight retread of, what was it, Tomorrow and Tonight? Oh, is that from, is that Love Gone? Uh, Alive, Alive, Alive 2 or to, a Love Gone, one of those two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's kind of a retread, but I, it's still well done enough of a song to have that not bother me, you know. Yeah. So was this not a single then? Was that... Was, was I don't think it was. Right, okay. if, if it was, it wasn't a single in the States. Okay. I think a 10 for that one. Yeah. At least if it was a single, it should have been the lead-off single and not Shandy. As much as I love Shandy, this would have been a better hook for the album as a single. Yeah. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Okay. So then we move on to another Ace one. Uh, two, sides, yes. two sides of the coin. So... At this point, side side one I think is solid. Side two sort of runs out of gas toward the middle. I totally agree. This is the this is the lesser of the three ace tracks. I like it, but it's mm. musically it's pretty good. I think the lyrics are, are kind of bad. <laughs> Not that Kiss is you know the bastion of <laughs> intellectual lyrics, but yeah, it's a very very basic song, isn't it? I mean, the vocal line yeah. just follows the it, riff exactly. You know, he's he's clearly right. just, just written a guitar riff and gone right. Well, if I just sing the tune, it is of that he's riff, singing that. Then I'll have the tune of the song. You know, I mean, um, he's done a good job. He, he, his words rhyme. That's good. He's got some rhymes. <laughs> they're kind of embarrassingly. They're not even sophomore <laughs> lyrics. I think grade school kids can probably write better lyrics than this. But yeah, yeah. I mean, he probably tossed the song off, didn't he, on his way to the studio? Yeah. It, because that's what Ace did. It does feel like a first draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he probably crashed his car shortly after writing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I'd give it, I'd give it probably a six. I yeah, yeah, that. six. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then we get to uh, another Jean song, which is She's Yo- she blah, 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 blah. She's So European. She Loves You? No. She Loves You, yeah, yeah. She's So European. Now... So now... You're European yourself, so how do you like this song? I've just put, this is one of Jean's <laughs> written on the back of a matchbox or written on the back of a beer mat kind of songs. You can imagine him writing it yeah. in about ten minutes. i put it's the least convincing track so far, though it does have a good opening riff. The keyboard sounds really naff, and there's an awful keyboard solo, which you think, why on earth did they have... Yes. Why, why have that keyboard solo when you could just have had Ace wailing away? It would have lifted it, you know. Uh- of all the tracks on this album, this is the least Kiss sounding track. Yes. I think. Everything about it, lyrically, musically, I I kind of like it. It is kind of catchy, but it is kind of an awful song. Yeah, it's not very good at all, really. I think I think I was I read his autobiography a few years back and I think he made the comment that he would keep little notes to himself if something pop like and it's like, hey, it's a good idea for a song title, mm. you know, and, and and that's where this kind of came out of. Oh, she's so European, you know. I... Well, in this book, in this book, Gene says that. Well, no, it's one of one of the producers they worked with. I can't remember who it was. I think it was the guy that produced Crazy Nights. Was it Ron Neverson? I think he so. He said that Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons's approach is totally different. When they went into an album, 
Paul would have worked really hard on maybe three or four really great songs uh, and they didn't need to do much to them in the studio. Whereas Gene would submit something like 30 songs for the album, 28 of which <laughs> were complete shit. And um, they would sort of end up you know, doing a few of his, but I don't think he cared as much uh, about the quality. Um, yeah, in, so you know, in he's got later that... years. Have you seen he's got that big, huge box set coming out? The Vault. Oh, God no. It's like it's like ten CDs of Gene Simmons outtakes and demos. Right. It, uh, it, it, it'd be it'd be interesting to hear. It's not a couple thousand dollars. Interesting to hear, but. Okay. Right. Yes. Well, I should put that on the Christmas list for next year. Well, hey, for the low, low price of ten thousand dollars, he will hand deliver it to you. Really? Yes. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I wish I was kidding. That's, what, that's almost tempting, though. In a, in a kind of a way, because I think the deal is, he'll, he'll stay with you for a couple hours, I think, too. You're allowed to have X number of friends over, too. Oh. So you all just split the costs. I'm pretty sure it's probably GeneSimmonsTheVault.com for more information. I think we should press on <laughs> quickly before I get my credit card out. Okay, right. right. Track nine, we've got easy as it yes. e easy as it seems. No, what oh, makes we, the we, world we didn't go give round? Our, yes, no, easy oh, as no, it easy seems. Easy as it seems. Sorry, but we we didn't give our, our ratings for she's so European. Oh, the reason Did the we? reason I'm confused is that the back of the cover, as is often the case with Kiss, the songs are all in the wrong order. Hey, you're yeah, right. So let's. I never noticed I'll stop. That I'll stop looking at that. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so she's just, she's a European. I I give it a four. So I would, I would give it a okay, five. But yeah, okay. it's it's not the worst thing on the album. We're getting to that. Okay, so <laughs> so easy as it seems, I put an okay Paul pop song. Apparently, he was thinking of the Spinners when he wrote it, and he wasn't even really thinking of it as being a Kiss song. He compared it to when he wrote Hard Luck Woman, and he was thinking of Rod Stewart or something. So he just sort of wrote this song thinking it'd be a track he could farm out to somebody and then kiss almost just you know just recorded it by accident yeah. um the, the difference here though is hard luck woman is a great song yeah absolutely yeah this, this, is, this a bit, is rubbish it's not no it's not very good at all this um, is the worst this is the worst track on the album it's particularly bad when he does the high harmony at the end or the high ah! bit of singing yeah you think, <laughs> oh, it's just Kinda, it's so misjudged he's hitting some like michael mcdonald high notes there he is, yes. It's, it's quite unfortunate. Yeah, which really, that I think that comes out of the falsetto stuff he did on I Was Made For Loving You. Yeah. Clearly, he thought, let's just do some more of that. I and mean, it was, you know. the, funky, the funky bass is kind of interesting in the track, but mm, yeah. no, I, I'd give it probably a four out of ten. I'd probably go with a three for this one, because I gave wow. She's So European a four, so and <laughs> you gave that one a five, so I think we should be consistent there so, you go. Um, okay, so we're nearly at the end, aren't we? We're on, okay. So it's, um, "Torpedo Girl," which is another Ace one. Yes, I've that just was... put. Go on. Uh, that song's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I I think "Talk to Me" is still his best track on the album. But this one's is is fairly great. I mean, I love the intro with the sound effects at the beginning with the the kind of sonar pinging and the. Uh, submarine sound effects and then yeah. it kicks into this great drum beat with this funky ass bass playing well i've put i've put clearly I not love. i've put clearly not gene and peter at the stars it sounds like mitch mitchell no. and no redding where it's got a hendrixy funk rock thing going on yeah like um, if you think of, if, you, if you think of the drums to like uh fire by hendrix yeah absolutely absolutely kind of, yeah yeah but with a funkier bass line on top of it this is yeah it's it's killer, and then yeah. it just cuts from that seamlessly into a straightforward rock beat with a great guitar riff. Yeah, interestingly, Ace apparently he said that he wouldn't let Gene play bass on any of his songs on this album. So Ace did not want Gene's bass sound or his <laughs> bass style. So it was probably Ace on bass on this one. Ace on bass. That was the, the, the Ace of bass. <laughs> Yeah, I, that was my understanding too. Is that Ace plays the bass on all his tracks? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'd give it an eight out of ten. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's up there for me in this album. And as a kid, it was probably my favorite track on here. Now that I'm older, I appreciate the other tracks, but yeah. 
Okay, so favorite. then we finish then with, I think, certainly Gene's weakest moment on the album. It's it's a very uncharacteristic song. <laughs> It's You're, a weak G, it's a weak gene moment on an album weak, with She's So European. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sort of staggers and then and then falls really finally at the end. You're yeah. all that I want. It it just Okay, so the song is called You're All That I Want. The song is that what I want. And it just it goes against every aspect of the demon's persona that we have kind of, you know, grown to know and love. It's yeah. a kind of pledge of commitment. You know, he sings, you know, my, my heart belongs to no one else. And you just think, what, what on earth has happened, you know? Um, well, th this was the time where he was kind of settled down somewhat. He was... True. At, at this time, what, what, Cher or Diana Ross? One of the two. Yeah, both probably. See what? <laughs> probably. But he was dedicated to both. <laughs> yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, this is sort of a anti-climax. Honestly... It's in the wrong position on the record. Definitely. Tomorrow, tomorrow should have been the last cut on the album. That would have been a much stronger closer track. You know, a great way to end yeah. the album. This just kind of ends with a whimper. It does. If it would have ended with tomorrow, it would have ended with a bang. Yes, it should have been buried somewhere on the album, or perhaps not even included. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, Ideally. five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Well, you've got 11 songs. Yeah, so, I mean, they could easily Ten have left good. that one off. Ten is good. So, yeah. um... Yeah, it was co-written with Vinnie Poncier again. So, no doubt it was Vinnie's fault again. Damn it, Vinnie. Damn it, Vinnie. And I give that one a four also. I, it, it's on par with easy as it seems for me. I'd probably go with a three for that one. Well, I mean, to be fair though, I very few Kiss albums are without clunkers on them. There are very few albums I consider to be flawless Kiss records. Most definitely, yeah. yeah. Even, even Destroyer has a couple of weak moments, really. Wait, what? Even Destroyer has a couple <laughs> of slightly weak, weaker moments, but we should probably save that oh. for, a, for a separate video. We should probably do a whole series you... of videos looking at one, one Kiss album per video. E Although you've done, this, video. you've done Destroyer already. I did do Destroyer, I did, it was, but it was one of my slowest videos to pick up per uh, views. Really? It was, yeah, it was a really slow video, that one. I thought it would be quite popular, but I think, yeah. uh, I think people see me on the video and they just don't think... I don't look Kiss. like a Kiss fan. They probably think, what's that was, guy got to I say about Kiss, I, you know? I was surprised when I saw it. I mean, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize he liked Kiss. Cool. <laughs> when I saw the clip. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think just like yourself, with Kiss, You're not wrong. With, you know, with Kiss for me, it was pure cartoon escapism, fantasy. Um, yeah. You know, and I know comic book fans who don't like Kiss, and I say to them, well, surely, I mean, Kiss plays right slap bang into the middle of that. But they just right. say, yeah, but yeah, but the music is lousy. They're just one of these bands that, you know, they didn't have any musical content. They were just cartoon superheroes, and it, you know, I think that's right. a that does them a disservice, really. I think. There are far worse bands out there, at the same time, making far worse music than Kiss. Hmm. I think you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to name one? <laughs> no, no, don't. That was just... that makes. Ted Nugent? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, far, wor far worse than Kiss. I don't know his music. What about Def Leppard? Yeah, I like Def Leppard. Yeah, I don't mind them, but if you if you take I like, their I work, like early Def Leppard. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. The first couple of albums. Later, later. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, we're veering dangerously off track. I think we should probably wrap this video up now because it's it's nearly an hour. I think it's. Whoa. I think we've done well. I think I think um, you know. I think the two viewers who are still watching will agree that we've managed thanks, to rein ourselves Jeff. in. Yeah, thanks, Jeff and Brian. And, uh, and Brian, that's all we got. <laughs> I think everybody else, too. You know, what's your thoughts? Because Kiss, Kiss does not get a great deal of love within the kind of area of the VC that I kind of occupy. I'm aware that there are other yeah. enclaves of the VC and, where, where there's much more talk of, you know, metal and rock and, and, and Kiss and are the, accepted and there, the... but... And not just the VC, but I think the world yeah, at large. Yeah. Kiss is one of those bands that either you love them or you hate them. There's no middle ground. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a, some bands, if you don't like them, you're sort of indifferent to them. Mm. You know, but some people just flat out hate Kiss. Mm, mm. I have friends who hate Kiss. Mm, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, their songs are dumb. You know? And you try pointing out, well, what about Detroit Rock City? That's not a dumb song. What about Beth? Or, you know, there, there are some really well-written songs. There aren't... Yeah, there are dumb songs, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, I calling agree. Dr. Love, I'm looking at you. But, I mean, 
there's a lot of good stuff actually there if you open your mind to it. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on that bombshell, as we exhort the VC to open their minds, embrace their inner kiss, embrace oh. embrace okay. unmasked, and um, I hope we hope that you that that you have enjoyed our little uh, Christmassy. What should we call this video? Yes. Should we should we call it something like our, Ho Ho Ho? It's Sean our, Sean and James's Christmas unmasked video. How about? Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> certain ring to it. I can't take full credit for that. Please tell me you've seen the Family Guy bit. Uh, I w yes, I'm sure I will have done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, there was this, yeah, it, for those who haven't seen it, there was an episode of the Family Guy, a Christmas episode, where on the TV, Peter is watching a Kissmas special or kiss saves santa and it's sort of a repeating joke throughout the episode where they cut back to the story it is absolutely fantastic have you seen uh, uh the, the scooby-doo kiss movie i i've seen pieces of that, it i've not seen all it's of it fantastic it really is it, I remember seeing that in the video at the store, and I'm like, yeah. this is a thing? You must, Why is this a thing? You must get it. It's literally, it's the yellow submarine of Kiss's of career. Kiss? Definitely, yeah. Is it is it better than Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much, much better. I think it really fulfills uh, every single expectation that you would have. <laughs> Kiss and Scooby-Doo, you think, well, either, it, either that's going to be terrible or it's going to be fantastic. And it literally it goes straight for the fantastic. It's really, really good. So yeah, there we go. I'll have to check that one out. Right. Okay. So let's uh, let's say bye bye, Merry Christmas to everybody, and then we yes. and then we'll continue so our, after we've switched off. To our two viewers, thank you for watching. Have a good Christmas. Thanks, Thanks for liking, subscribing, blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think we got it all. Yeah. Right. And it simply right. leaves for me to say goodbye. Ta ta. And we should say.